Welcome to the castle everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42 and this is week number four of the future fantasy world building vlog that I'm doing here on the channel. And today's topic is going to be faster than light travel. This is one of the major hurdles that I had to overcome when I was thinking about humans and elves and dwarves, my three core species. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that here. Now, recently I came across a really great discussion thread on subreddit world building and the one the main poster uh, basically came up with four different theories, main theories that is used quite prevalently in science fiction works. And so those four different theories are negative slash null mass drive, which, yeah, uh, hand wavium, which is some sort of a made up element that makes faster than light travel possible. Uh, travel gates and wormholes. So basically what I'm thinking of for humans, there's a hyper gate and then travel to alternate dimensions. This is Warhammer 40k and Starfinder. So out of those four different theories, most science fiction authors can put their faster than light travel into one of those four categories. And so I was reading through some of the comments and how other people have basically put their faster than light, how their faster than light travel works in their universe. And it, it quite followed one of those four things or a combination of those four even. So for example, in this universe, there's going to be a combination. So let's talk about the different faster than light travels as it appears in different media. Mass Effect, one of the main inspirations for the system, uses a element called element zero. And this, whenever you actually put an electrical current through it, it influences the actual mass of whatever object is within its surroundings. So for example, if you use a negative electrical current, it lessens the mass of the object, making it easier to project uh, to project it into faster than light travels. Also, you have the use of the mass of the mass relays, which makes travel instantaneous between two different relays. Uh, there are some uh, minor relays that can project uh, ship basically in a different direction, but that's neither here nor there. Not quite FTL, but the Epstein drive was an interesting read through. This is from the Expanse series. And what this is based off of, it's just a efficient way of utilizing fuel. And so in the Expanse universe, you have a ship that is going towards the edge of the galaxy. Let's say Pluto, right? Towards the ring. And so you plot a course that's going right there, you calculate your total distance, you calculate your velocity and how fast you're going, and you start thrusting. You just keep going. By the halfway point, you actually have reached a certain speed, you're going to flip your ship around so its thrusters are facing the other way, and then you begin a process called deceleration. Now, you could actually go much faster by just keep, by just keep accelerating, but if you do that, you're not going to be able to stop when you need to. You're going to overshoot. So there's that problem. There's Star Wars is the hyperspace uh, system, which are just highways spread out across the galaxy that, that the different species uh, utilize, which is actually an interdimensional system of travel. Uh, there's a Star Trek warp drive, which is somewhat... I want to say it's similar to Mass Effect, but I don't think that's quite right. What it is, is it's a... The warp drive creates a bubble or a, a field around the ship, which uh, makes it able to accelerate at faster than light speeds. And then there's the... Or, or I can't even remember what it's called. But there it forms like a, um, a wave behind it that it just kind of rides on throughout space. Uh, Swords Without Number uses something called the Impact Drive, and Swords Without Numbers is another role-playing system that I am uh, kind of basing some of my mechanical systems on. And so uh, they use the Impact Drive to enter hyperspace, and it only works on the edge of the system outside of gravitic influences, which I think is an 
excellent concept and that's actually something that I've incorporated into this universe where the hypergates that humans have created can only function so far out of the system, hence why it's kind of where Pluto is. It needs to be out far away outside of a star's gravity influence. So, Esper Genesis use moon bases, or that's not quite right. There are these moons that have been discovered, much like the mass relays and mass effect, where if you connect your star drive to it, you're able to instantly travel to another moon with that same system. It's... It, ma it makes more sense when you read it, but it's basically your, uh, it's a moon base that a progenitor race has created all throughout the entire universe. And so you link your star drive to one moon base and connect, and you're able to connect it to a different moon base. You just have instant travel between those two. Um, then you have the Starfinder slash Warhammer method, which is just utilizing a different dimension of space travel which is terrifying because you don't know what's in those other dimensions as you've probably heard or seen in Warhammer 40k uh, novels and stuff like that. So out of all of the different methods of faster than life travel, I am least inclined to include that one because it just doesn't really make a lot of sense and I really don't like, I've never liked the FTL in Starfinder. And that was my actual first encounter with that. And then I later started digging into the lore of Warhammer and I didn't like it because it was the same thing. So I don't really like interdimensional travel um, or like going into a different dimension, flying through it, uh, coming out of that dimension and hoping that you're there where you need to be. So yeah, I never really liked that. I want something a little bit more concrete. So those are the main different influences for uh, FTL in terms of the future fantasy. So when we are, when I was thinking about the FTL drive, let's just say for humans, one of my main influences was Cowboy Bebop. I really enjoyed having that sort of a system where you had two astral gates linked together and ships would just go in there through there like an interstellar highway and then come out whenever they needed to. And of course they were fined like that, which is why I got the idea of a corporation war to actually exploit that. And so humans use hypergates, which are two linked gates that are for intents and purposes going to be a interstellar highway. A ship goes through, accelerates at a certain uh, faster than light speed and comes out through the other gate and FTL then stops or slows down. This can only work outside of a star's gravitic influence, meaning at the edge of that system. So this means that you can't quite go from Pluto to Earth because then you're going to get into some major miscalculations like we saw with the moon uh, disaster in if you were watching the previous video where a uh, prototype of the hypergate relay uh, basically sent a ship to the moon instead of through the gate and it kept going at its F near FTL speed and crashed into the moon and it like blew up a big hole in the moon and there's like a huge crater that you can see and everything like that. And so <laughs> that is one of the FTL methods for future fantasy. Elves have something completely different, which I'm not going to get too far into just yet. Elves travel around by the use of teleportation magic. Since elves are a magically inclined species, they, their actual method of traveling is by teleportation. Their ships can actually t create a wormhole that once they go through it, they end up somewhere else, wherever the magic takes them, wherever the... Uh, the wizard, or I don't have a name for them just quite yet, but wherever the wizard actually wants them to go because a ship needs to be linked to a specific pilot because it's bound by nature. And that's some of the things that I'm going to start thinking about uh, when I start creating the elves is how, how far away from technology they are. So they're not really technologically inclined, yet they have a greater method of FTL travel 
if that makes any sense. And then we come to the dwarves, which was really interesting because I, at first I didn't have a way of them to travel faster than light. And then I thought of something quite funny. What if they just blew up their ship? Okay, that's going to, that's actually taking it a little bit too extreme. Let me rephrase. What if they uh, created a sort of a reaction akin to an explosion that projected their ship to a certain uh, calculable distance. <laughs> and I actually got this off of a YouTube video on uh, different, different faster than light uh, methods, theories, basically. And one of them was to basically create a uh, nuclear explosion behind the uh, thruster to project it, the ship. Now, I'm going to actually use that but the calculations are going to be very precise and actually later down past 2500 the year the dwarves are going to be creating ships because dwarves are going to be the master shipbuilders in this universe like the calamari were in star wars so dwarves are the master shipbuilders are actually going to start creating ships with human ingenuity and now we got ships that can actually go through ftl inside of a star system at a fraction of the speed of the hypergates. So it makes inner system travel much faster. And that is basically through the use of that method where you create some sort of a reaction that project, projects your ship to a certain distance. And that has to be heavily calculated, either through a computer or a really, really smart person. Most likely a computer though. So that's the different uh, types of travel in terms of the three core races and those three core races or three core species are going to influence how other species get around. Um, so there, every technology that I create for around these three species are going to be accessible to the other species. Um, maybe a little bit differently from the Viscari because the Viscari were on their own for quite a while. And so when they actually started declaring war on different galactic races, uh, they needed to already have their own method. And it might be something similar to what the dwarves had. Definitely not the elves. Elves are going to be the only species that can do what they do because of their magic heritage. So that's really all that I have for FTL. Um, that's a good starting point, and everything that I think of after this point is going to be heavily influenced by either those three methods of travel, which is really those two methods of travel, because the hypergates, the hypergates are going to be spread out throughout the galaxy once humanity will start working with the elves and the dwarves to expand their reach, and then dwarves have their own method of doing their FTO, which will then be integrated into existing technology to make inner inner system travel a lot faster so or even uh, travel between systems that don't have a hypergate although that would be done at a fraction of the time which means or a fraction of the speed which means you're going to be taking a lot more time to get to those systems so not quite a not a favorable method of travel but one that could also work for this game so thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Please give me your questions so I can start answering them and fleshing out this world. You never know, your questions might actually get me thinking about something that I haven't even thought of just yet that needs to be answered. And so hearing feedback from you guys has been such a really good read for me, especially in getting these ideas. Feel free to give this video a huge thumbs up to support this series and subscribe if you would like to see more. I will see you guys in the next video.